it's like, man, that's expensive. Like, that's the way I thought when I first started painting. I saw these great painters that I wanted to be like, like using all this expensive materials. Like, man, like I'm never going to be able to practice. Like, I can't afford to be painting on these linen panels that cost, you know, 15 bucks for a 9x12. Welcome to Paint Talk, the weekly show where I answer your questions on oil painting. If you have a question, please leave it in the comments section of this video and I just might answer it on next week's Paint Talk. If you're new to the channel, if you've never seen any one of my videos, my name is Chris Fornatero and I'm here to help simplify oil painting so you can get better faster. If you want to see what I paint on a daily basis, you can follow me on Instagram at Forza43. If you're looking for full in real time painting video tutorials, I offer those, but they are on my Patreon page, which is also linked below. All right, let's get into the questions. All right, our first question comes from Bushwalking Light. It says, do you have a website where subscribers can upload their works for display and comment? Uh, I do not have that. I've thought about doing that. Um, should I do that? Leave a comment below if, if, if you guys would like something like that. I haven't looked into it. I've seen other um, people do that. I've seen other artists that do that. Uh, I'd have to look into see how I do that. I don't know if it'd be a Facebook group or some other website. I've really, I have no idea how to do that, but I would like to do it because I get a lot of people actually um, messaging me on Instagram and emails and stuff with their work and just wanting um, advice on their work. So maybe having like a group where we all can share and talk about it would be a good thing. I might be able to do that through my, my Patreon or maybe Facebook. I don't know. If you guys have any recommendations, please leave, let it know in the comment section. I, I, have, I have very little knowledge on, on how to do that. Um, I'm not very good with Facebook, so I need your guys' help if I'm gonna do that. So if you guys want that, let me know. And if you have suggestions or know about that, please help me out with that. But that that would sound fun. That sounds really fun. All right, next is Clover Honey. I answered one of your questions last time, but you had another good question this time, so I'm gonna answer. It says, how do you fix mistakes? Like a bend in the wrong place, but you don't catch the right catch it the right way. Uh, that was commented on um, my video on painting hands. Uh, I guess you're talking about the bend in the hands. How do you fix mistakes like that? Like you bend the finger in the wrong direction and you, you kind of don't catch it right away. Uh, well, first off, a way that you can catch it right away is constantly be stepping back from your painting, constantly be working all the areas of the painting. That's why I always say to do this, always you know, be moving around, never get too far in one section you know, because you're not gonna see mistakes. If you're not, con like I, when I say step back, step back like seven feet and really look at everything and, and see how it's working and get fresh looks on it. You're, that's the way you're gonna catch these mistakes before you get way into your painting. And it's gonna be, you know, you can fix it just as easily when you're painting, but it means you have to scrape off the paint or wipe it off with a paper towel and start over. And you just put so much work and, you know, you got all this nice paint, and all this, you know, nice detail and your values are right and your colors are right, but, something's not angled right or it's not the right size you know some i've been there it it sucks but you you also got to have the mentality of not being afraid to just start that section over you can get a palette knife you can scrape it down as much as you can with a palette knife then get a paper towel um get some paint there on your paper towel wipe it off and just start over that's really the only way you can change it but when i start my paintings i start with thinner paint and that's when i say there's a difference between moving the paint and applying the paint. In the beginning sections of the painting, I'm using relatively thin paint with paint thinner, and I'm moving the paint around. So like if I indicate, you know, the couple marks, like where a finger would be in the angle of finger, and I'm constantly stepping back and checking it, I can see, oh, I didn't angle that finger correctly, but it's thin paint, doesn't matter. I can kind of, I can move it really easy. Or I can paint over it very easily. It's not a big thing to adjust it. So the main things are, constantly be stepping back from your paint so you catch these mistakes early when you're using thinner paint that's easier to move around and paint over. But if you do get really far in developing your painting and you realize something is off, sometimes you just gotta bite the bullet and wipe it off with a paper towel with you know paint thinner on it or scrape it off with a palette knife and just, you know, do it again. Okay, next question. Uh, Amy Becker says, well done. Do you think working in plain air a la premium forces a painter to push through the ugly stage uh, where you can get stuck? Yes, it does. All right, this is a really good question because I feel like when you paint enough and you get enough practice, you kind of know 
when a painting is working relatively early where most people would look at it and kind of see your first initial marks like this happens to me all the time when i'm playing or painting people walk by when i'm like 10 minutes into a painting they're like oh this guy doesn't look very good and it's because that's just the way it is like the painting's going to look a certain way in your first you know you're blocking stuff out it's thin paint it's messy uh it's not detailed but to you it makes sense i've talked a lot of times when I'm first blocking in a painting and putting down notes of color, that it's that it's, it's like notes. Um, you're taking notes, notes for you, something that you will see and realize what that is, especially painting a player where you have to make quick notes. You know, if clouds are moving, you have to mark, you know, where the shadows in those clouds, because those clouds are going to move. Same with, uh, light on trees or on the ground. Uh, a lot of times I like to grab my shadows first because those are going to change. And I kind of, I make notes of them and it makes sense to me and someone else might look at it and not see what I'm doing or, you know, understand it or think it looks good. And a lot of times I know when a painting is going to turn out well, like right in those initial stages, because I've been able to identify what looks good in an ugly stage of a painting, because a painting definitely has ugly stages, especially at the beginning. But to me, it's not ugly. To me, it's like, you know, it's like one of my favorite stages of the painting when I'm just first blocking and everything and getting the foundation. Because I know if I get the foundations of the painting right, if I get the key shapes, the key values, the rest is easy. Like the rest is just icing on the cake because that's what really holds a painting together is, is the good composition, you know, nailing the basic values and the big values, the big shapes, and everything after that is, is, is just gravy. So yeah, don't worry about, you know, the ugly stages of the painting. Uh, you know, force yourself through it. There's been a lot of times in the beginning when I, I thought, oh, this painting's not gonna work out and I kept going, I kept going and it actually turned out pretty well. Also, I've talked about doing a painting very quickly, uh, like as an exercise, you know, doing a painting that you think would normally take you an hour and a half or two hours, do it in 45 minutes or do it in 15 minutes, 10 minutes, you know, something that's impossible for you to do and force yourself to really paint fast because you're gonna learn a lot about, you know, what you know, what you don't know, uh, you're going to be surprised at how well it actually turns out, you know, not overthinking it and not getting discouraged at the beginning of the painting when it doesn't look that great. So if you do have that problem, you get discouraged early in a painting because it's just not looking well, you know, maybe try that exercise, you know, push through it. And a lot of times they will turn out looking great and you'll learn something. I hope that answers your question. All right. Next question is from Danya Ham, Hamith. Ham I'm sorry. I can't read. I'm sorry. Uh, Awesome, thank you for sharing. Uh, my question, do you think name brand art supplies really matters slash can make better artists? Just because art supplies, especially oil painting, can get really expensive and I've been struggling lately in order to find proper supplies since I've lived in a developing country. Thank you. That's a really good question. That is a question that I had for many, 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 many years and not knowing really what supplies to get. Okay, so I do get a lot of like supplies questions and I had a lot of questions when I was first starting oil painting because I think a lot of people see a lot of really good artists, a lot of seasoned artists that use very specific su supplies. They use really nice supplies. You know, they're always painting on linen uh, with you know certain oil paints, certain brushes. And it's like, man, that's expensive. Like that's the way I thought when I first started painting and I saw these great painters that I wanted to be like, like using all this expensive materials like man like i'm never going to be able to practice like i can't afford to be painting on these linen panels that cost you know 15 bucks for a 9 by 12 and you know buying this oil paint that's like 30 bucks for a little itty bitty tube you know it takes it's, it took me some time to figure out the best supplies for me to use to practice um because there definitely is supplies that's just like not that great. It's really cheap, but it's just not that great. And the thing is when you're starting out, like it, it really doesn't matter because you can't tell the difference between, you know, a $3 panel and a $15 panel. You can't tell the difference between, you know, a tube of paint that costs $6 and a tube of paste paint that costs, you know, $56. Like you, you really can't, like I couldn't, I don't know, maybe you guys can, like I couldn't really tell the difference. I could definitely couldn't tell a $50 difference of paint, you know? So don't worry about that. You will, I always say, like, you'll figure out when you need to get better supplies because you'll be doing your work and you won't be able to accomplish something you're trying to accomplish. You won't be able to get a look, a, a certain look you're, you're wanting. You're not gonna be able to get, 
you know, a certain texture or, or, or be able to do something and that will cause you to seek out a better material, whatever it is. Don't get caught up in supplies. Like it's an endless battle that you won't win. Everybody uses different materials. Like great painters across the board will use different brushes, different paints, different this, different that. So it's not like there's some set golden set of materials that you're supposed to be using. And it's like if you just like started golfing for the first time, like you wouldn't need to go buy the most expensive pair of golf clubs because you probably couldn't tell the difference between the cheapo set and the really nice set. Yet I'm sure Tiger Woods could definitely tell the difference because he's had so much practice, you know, golfing that he can tell like the very the difference between uh, different clubs. Like the same goes for your painting materials. Like yes, these painters that have been painting for 20, 30, 40, 50 years. Like, yeah, they can tell the difference, but if you're just starting out, like don't get too bogged down in it. So through the years, I've found materials that I suggest for beginners. They're materials that I think are good. It's not like I'm just giving you the cheapest materials I can find. They're materials that are fairly priced that I feel like are decent quality. And I put links in the description of all my videos uh, to the supplies I suggest for beginners. So if you wanna know, you can look down there to get it. Now you say you're in a developing country. If you can't get that, honestly, use whatever you can. I've seen amazing painters paint paintings without paint thinner, without medium. I've created really good paints with the cheapest paints I could ever find. And just think of it this way, like if you keep practicing with materials that are cheaper and probably not as good, when the time comes when you actually do use those nice uh, materials, you're gonna be that much better. It's gonna be like you've been running with a weighted vest this whole time, and then you finally get to take off the vest and put on some nice running shoes, and you're just gonna fly. And you know, do what you can. Like this is painting, like this isn't a, a, a set, you use this, you use this, you use this. Like everybody's kind of just tinkering and, and figuring out their own way to do it with what they can. Like it's, that's one of the cool things about oil painting is, is I see all these different oil painters and they all have their own little ways of going about it. Like I've seen people that mix up their own paints. You know, they have their own way of getting their canvas set out and you know, it, they make their own pochade boxes. It's it's awesome, it's, it's really inventive. Like a lot of oil painters I found are, are um, are really good like craftsmen and tinkerers and can build things. If you've ever seen uh, James Gurney's uh, YouTube page, he's a phenomenal painter, but he's also like a great builder of stuff. And he's always building his own little contraptions and building, you know, supplies for himself for painting. So, you know, just do what you need to do. And maybe that'll even make your paintings even more unique, you know, using the stuff that you do. So, you know, do what you can. If you have the means to get new uh, supplies, better supplies and experiment, go for it. But don't by any means think that you need to have top end supplies to make top end work. All right, so that's all the questions for this week. Uh, again, if you want your questions answered, ask them in the comments section of this video and I will do my best to get to them next week. Uh, again, if you're looking for full-time oil painting video tutorials, I offer those on my Patreon page, which is linked below. If you wanna see what I'm painting on a daily basis, you can follow me on Instagram at Forza43. I am Chris Fornatero here telling you to go get painting. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button. I also offer you this video and this video. They both will change your life forever. Just pick one. You can't go wrong.